Today I'm going to show you how I knit a flower bouquet using a circular knitting machine. This is a perfect springtime knitting project and I think it would make a really thoughtful gift for Mother's Day, Father's Day, or any other occasion where you'd send flowers to a friend or a loved one. And since you don't need to water them, they make a very low maintenance bouquet. Or like me, you can keep yours on display in your home or as a centerpiece. I placed ours in our windowsill and they make us smile every time we walk by. I'm going to show you every step of the process here, but if you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase the print pattern in my Etsy shop, which I'll link to below. Or you can visit Diana Levine knits.com to check out all my knitting machine sketchbooks, coloring book, templates, and patterns. And I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who's ordered my products. It's a huge help in allowing me to continue to put in the time to create fun projects and film and edit these tutorials. Here are the supplies I used for this project. A 48 needle Centro knitting machine, a 22 needle Centro knitting machine, loops and threads impeccable yarn, a few hair elastics, some green pipe cleaners, a crochet hook, a darning needle, and a pair of scissors, some stuffing, and a flower vase. I'll link to all the supplies used in today's video in the description below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for lots more fun, quick and easy knitting patterns and tutorials. Each flower is made up of three parts, the outside, the center, and the stem. First up, I'll show you how to knit the outside. To begin, cast onto a 48 needle knitting machine using scrap yarn. Scrap yarn is a yarn you'll be removing at the end, so it doesn't matter which color you choose. To cast on, wrap your yarn around the first needle and then weave back and forth along all the needles until you finish the end of the row. When you see your first needle again, place your yarn into the tensioner and choose the middle tension. Then crank your machine forward to begin knitting. Knit five rows in the scrap yarn. After five rows, cut a short tail in your yarn and throw it into the machine. Then cut a really long tail in the flower color yarn and throw it in the middle of the machine with the two tails right next to each other. You'll need a long tail at least a few feet to sew the flower at the end. Hold the two tails close together and low as you begin to knit the project. Go slowly at first to make sure it catches all of your stitches and then you can pick up speed after a few rows. For the flower, knit 20 rows in your main color. After you finish 20 rows, cut another long tail in the main color and switch back to the scrap yarn. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. After 5 rows, cut a short tail in the scrap yarn and crank your machine until the work falls off the needles. If your work gets stuck on the last couple of needles, it's totally fine, just pull them off manually. Gently stretch out your stitches and then put the work aside while we get started knitting the stem. For the stem, follow the exact same procedure as before, casting on and knitting 5 rows in the scrap yarn, then switch to a green yarn. You don't need a super long tail for the stem, a regular length tail is fine. Knit three rows in green. Then switch back to the scrap yarn for five more rows. Cut your yarn and cast off the stitches. Gently stretch out your stitches and when you reach the stitches where you cast on, give the green yarn tails a quick pull to tighten up those two stitches. Put your stem aside and we'll knit the inside of the flower now. Switch to a 22 needle circular knitting machine. Unlike our first two parts, we won't be using a scrap yarn for the center. Instead, use a yellow or an orange yarn and cast on directly with the main color. Follow the same procedure as before, weaving the yarn back and forth along the first row and then begin knitting. Don't count the cast on row as a row. Your first row will be the row after the cast on. Knit 13 rows in the main color. When you finish 13 rows, cut a long tail in the yarn and crank the machine a couple of stitches. Pull your yarn tail out from under the needle and locate the stitch where your yarn is coming out from. You'll begin picking up stitches with the stitch directly to the left of the needle where the yarn is coming out. Use a darning needle to pick up that stitch and pull the yarn through. Continue picking them up one at a time, and then after a few stitches, you can try picking them up two or three at a time, making sure not to pull any of the other stitches off accidentally. Grab the last stitch and then gently stretch the stitches out. Pull one of the yarn tails tight to cinch one side of the work and set it aside. It's time to assemble the flower. You should have three pieces knit now, the center, the stem, and the outside of the flower. We'll begin by assembling the outside. Turn the tube inside out with the V-shaped stitches on the inside of the work. Wrap a hair elastic around the middle, just like if you were making a scrunchie. Sandwich the two sides of the scrap yarn together and line up the main color loops on top of each other. Begin with the first stitch to the left of the cast on yarn and use a crochet hook to pull the top loop through the bottom. Next, pull through the next top loop. Then pull through the next bottom loop. Continue in this pattern, alternating between pulling through the top loop and then the bottom loop until about one and a half inches from the end of the row. Once you're almost done with your row, stop crocheting the seam and begin to fill the flower with stuffing. You don't want to overstuff the flowers, just a very small amount will do. Start with very small amounts and start pushing it through the tube to the bottom. 
Continue filling the flower lightly and evenly around the circle. Add in a bit more for the area you're about to crochet, and then finish crocheting the seam. When you reach the end, pull the yarn tail through the last loop and secure with a knot. Then tie both main color tails together to secure the end. Next, remove the scrap yarn. One side will likely pull off quite easily, but for the side where it's more of a challenge, identify the top yarn that runs through the loops and pull that one thread out stitch by stitch using a crochet hook or your fingers. After you remove that one yarn, the rest of the scrap yarn should pull off much more easily. We now have a little stuffed circle, which looks almost like a donut. The first step of creating the flower shape is to decide how many petals you'd like. I've used both five and six petals, and both look lovely, but I'm going to be doing five petals for this flower. Your tail yarn will be where the first indent will go, so use your stitch markers to plan where the other four indents will be. If you want to be perfect about it, you can count the stitches and do the math, but I just do it by eye. Once you've planned where your indents will go, it's time to do the first cinch. For the flower, choose which side will be the front and which will be the back. The back will be where we tie all the knots. We're going to be doing a lot of pulling the yarn to make the flower shape, and keep in mind that as you work, you want to be pulling the yarn tightly, but not so tight that you rip your yarn. For the first cinch, your yarn is already at the top, so simply use a darning needle to sew back and forth from back to front until you reach the inside of the circle. Then pull the yarn as tight as you can without breaking, and then loop the yarn once around the outside of the flower. Pull it tightly and then tie a knot and a stitch in the middle to secure the cinch. Next, thread the needle through to the inside area of the next stitch marker. Tie a knot to secure the yarn. Then, sew in a line up to the stitch marker. Remove the stitch marker and make sure to capture one of the very top stitches. Then, thread the needle through the middle of the work back to the knot you tied at the bottom. Pull the yarn tightly and then wrap the yarn with one loop on the outside of the work. Pull the yarn tightly again and secure it with a second knot on the inside loop. Then, thread your yarn to the next section. Continue repeating this process for all five cinches of the flower. The outside of our flower is complete. It's time to assemble the center. Grab your yellow project and place a very small amount of stuffing in the work. Again, don't overfill with stuffing. You just want a very small amount. Use the yarn tail to cinch the circle closed. Use a darning needle to tie a knot to secure the opening, and then thread it through to the other side of the ball and secure the other opening. Then tie a knot between the two tails to secure the seam. Next, push the center through the middle of the flower and use a darning needle and the yarn tails to lightly sew the edges together so the center doesn't fall through the flower. Next, use a needle to weave your ends through the work and trim the tails. Our flower is almost done. Next, we need to assemble the stem. Grab your green project and flatten the work with the yarn tails all the way to the left side. Use a crochet hook to go through the loop all the way to the right and then pull through the next loop on the top. Then pull through the next loop on the bottom. Continue in this pattern, alternating between pulling the top loop and the bottom loop through the loop on your needle until the end of the row. When you reach the end, pull the yarn tail through your loop and secure with a knot. Next, turn the work over. I'm using a couple of pipe cleaners in my stem because it helps make them moldable and sturdy, but if you're making this project for a child or a baby, I suggest not using the pipe cleaner because they can have a sharp, pokey end. If you do choose to use them, I suggest using green because the color will show through if the work is stretched. Lay your work on the table with the inside facing up. Fold a couple of pipe cleaners to fit the shape of your work, and then we'll crochet the seam closed over the pipe cleaner. Begin like we did on the other side with the tail yarn on the left and using a crochet hook to pull the loops through starting on the right side. However, with the stem, I find it easier to go from the other side of the loop and essentially flip the stem back and forth to capture either sides of the loops. When you reach the end, pull the yarn tail through the last loop and secure it with a knot. Next, remove the scrap yarn in the exact same way as we did with the flower. Now, use a needle and the tail yarns from the stem to sew the stem into the center of the flower. Go through a few times to make sure it's secured tightly. Then, tie a knot between the tails and weave in the ends. Our flower is complete. Next, we need to assemble all the flowers into a bouquet. Depending on how tightly you assemble the stems, some of the flowers might flop down when you put them into the vase. To make the flowers look like a bouquet, Use a few lengths of yarn in the same color as the flowers to add one or two stitches to connect the flowers to each other. Play around with where you want each flower and continue securing the flowers to each other with a couple of quick stitches. If you'd like, you can use a bow or a piece of green yarn to tie the stems together. Next is the best part, adding the flowers to a vase. Our bouquet is complete. You can use the flowers as a bouquet or you can knit just one flower for the vase. Play around with different colors, the possibilities are endless. If you have an avid gardener in your life, you could even match the flower colors to the flowers in their garden. 
If you make this project, please tag me so I can see your work. I am at Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest. If you'd like to support the channel and purchase the pattern, visit my Etsy shop linked below or head to dianalevinenits.com for the link and to check out all my knitting and knitting machine workbooks, templates, and patterns. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel for lots more fun, quick and easy knitting patterns and tutorials.